Dakota Royal. Giant Stadium. We apologize that we had some technical problems in the beginning of our game. You have missed about seven minutes of the first quarter, eight minutes, 20 seconds remaining. The Panthers of Pittsburgh are getting ready to kick off. They lead it by the score of three to nothing on a Jeff Van Horn field goal. Rutgers unable to move the ball early. And so that's what you've missed so far. Pittsburgh leading three nothing. And uh, Bruce Beck, uh, a very important game for both clubs as they come in at five up and three down as far as ball possibilities are concerned. Both clubs are still thinking about bowl possibilities, Lou. The three scouts that are here today from bowls are the Sun Bowl, the Peach Bowl, and the Independence Bowl. Sun Bowl here really just to see Pittsburgh, but the Peach Bowl and the Independence Bowl here to see both clubs and the loser of this game pretty much out of the bowl picture. So it is a big football game for both teams. All right, Van Horn will kick off as the Panthers move right to left on your screen. Back deep is Cobb. Kind of fumbles it around a little bit, then takes it up the middle, tries to spin outside, and is knocked down across the 20 at the 23-yard line. All right, the Rutgers offense. Up front, the Scarlet Knights will go with Nick Erta at center. The guards will be Strickland and Dubiel. Milano and Tardy, the tackles. Bruce Campbell, the big tight end. Brian Cobb and Tyrone McQueen are the receivers. Henry Henderson, Curtis Stevens behind freshman quarterback John Murphy from Mastic Beach, New York. And this is a big game, obviously, for Murphy, who was four for five last week against Vanderbilt, replacing the injured Scott Ernie. First down and 10 for Rutgers. Here's the give up the middle. Curtis Stevens across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Picked up about five yards on the carry. Second down and five. Bruce, what about that pit defense? Well, it's a 4-3-4 defensive group. Carter, Siragusa, Spindler, and Grossman are the front four. The linebackers, Zeke Gatson, who is a terrific player, has 19 and a half sacks this year, along with Jerry Alsafsky and Jerry Wall. The deep men are Richard, Washington, Owens, and Jones. Second down, five for the Knights. Murphy back to throw. In trouble. He'll go down as the Panthers come in with some force. Zeke Gatson in on the sack, and he is the sack man for Pittsburgh, Bruce. 19 and a half, that's a pit record. And he leads the NCAA. As far as anyone knows, it's an all-time record, but unfortunately, sacks was not kept officially as an NCAA statistic years ago, so it's hard to compare it with the players from maybe five, 10 years ago. Just to recap what happened to Rutgers, the first time they had the football, they ran the ball three consecutive times, did not pick up a first down, and had to punt. So Murphy, the sophomore quarterback, has yet to put it up today. There you see Dick Anderson, and this is a situation he didn't want to be in. Third down and long, Curtis Stevens goes down behind the line of scrimmage as the Panthers read it well, and again, a conservative call on third down. Uh, I mentioned again because uh, before our viewers joined us, the Rutgers did the same thing on the third down along earlier. Good play by Jerry Wall, who with 65 tackles is fourth on this Pittsburgh defensive group. Now, Pittsburgh's blocked a lot of punts this year. They've got 10 men on the line right now. All right, Matt O'Connell is in to kick it away for Rutgers. O'Connell had a punt earlier for 39 yards. He does get it away. It's a high booming kick. And the fair catch made at the 40 yard line for the Panthers. So Pittsburgh will go on the offense, leading about a score of three to nothing. And the pit offense up front, it's a good sized offensive line. Ed Miller, the center, Dean Caliguire, Mark Stepnoski are the guards, Ricketts and Matus are the tackles. Eric Seaman, the starting tight end, the receivers, Reggie Williams and Michael Stewart and Riddick and Craig Ironhead Hayward behind the freshman quarterback Darnell Dickerson who excited the crowd early in the first quarter. We'll talk about Dickerson after this play, Bruce. Okay. First down and 10, the pitch to Hayward. Short side of the field and he's knocked out of bounds. Good defensive play by Scott Miller up front who is starting at nose guard today in place of the injured Carter Giles. In Pittsburgh's first drive today, they had the football 13 plays. They went 61 yards using four minutes and 20 seconds of clock. And it ended with a 20-yard field goal by Jeff Van Horn. In that drive, Hayward carried the ball seven times for 18 yards. Dickerson was two for four in the air for 29 yards. So you're caught up 
as to what has transpired thus far with Pitt leading three zip. Second down and 10 for the Panthers. Here's the give to Hayward up the middle. He's got good yardage across the 45 up to the 46 yard line brought down by Alec Hoke. A pickup of six, third down and four. You talked about Dickerson. He is a freshman getting his first ever start today. Last week against Syracuse, he came off the bench to replace Sal Janella, the season senior, and in that game completed eight of 20 for 76 yards, had a touchdown and an interception. Gonna be a good one, a freshman for Michigan. Third down and four for the Pitt Panthers at the Pittsburgh 46. Dickerson rolls out left side. He's looking, being chased by Bankos. Now he turns it on. Nice move, and he gets out of bounds, picking up a Pittsburgh first down. You're looking at the future of Pittsburgh football. His name, Darnell Dickerson, 6'4", 200 pounds. He is a true freshman, was not redshirted from Martin Luther King High School in Detroit, and this is what Mike Godfrey likes about him. He's got terrific feet. He's much more mobile than Janela. He gives the Panthers another dimension. He can run with the football. He also just has what they call excellent feet, important for a quarterback today. First down and 10 for the Pitt Panthers at the 45. Up the middle, the give is to Lewis Riddick, the fullback. He hasn't carried the football too much this year, but he does get some good yardage on that play. Picks up four, second down and six. You see that fullback position was supposed to be filled this year by Nate Hayward, Craig's brother, but he went out with a knee injury early in the season. So Riddick, who was a defensive player, was moved to fullback and has responded with 27 carries, 134 yards. Doesn't carry the ball that much. Five yards per pop, though. I formation, Dickerson back to throw, looking. Now he'll ad lib and it's brought down. A little ankle tackle by Alec Hoke at the 45. He stepped on the feet of Mark Stepnoski, his offensive guard. Let's take a look at the Rutgers defense. Scarlet Knights have played good defense this year. There's the starting defensive unit. Scott Miller will be at nose guard today, replacing Carter Giles. Savoy and Tompkins are the tackles. Hoke and Evans outside. Garia and Spidelli are two inside backers. And the secondary, Austin Washington, Sellers and Baker. Baker leads the secondary in tackles. Dickerson, third down and 10, rolls out left, right side. He's got a lot of room now. He may have another pit first down. He does. He saw the marker, stepped out. That's a heads-up play by a freshman quarterback. He looks awfully good thus far. His decisions have been good. He's decided to keep the football when he hasn't found a receiver. He was the Michigan High School Athlete of the Year one year ago, a four-year starter at Martin Luther King High School in Detroit. Seems to be a penalty on the play, Bruce. And we'll have to wait and see what the call is. It's against the Panthers. It's going to come back. It's a big one, too. That's a big penalty because not only is it 15 yards, but it wipes out a first down. So the Panthers now with third and long instead of a first down at the Rutgers 35. Clipping is the call against Pittsburgh. Take a look at the records uh, for both clubs. Pittsburgh, the Rutgers, Rutgers actually, with the win over Cincy, Kentucky, and Duke. And then the Knights are moving along this season losing to Vanderbilt last week, and that was a, a huge loss as far as their bowl hopes are concerned. Dickerson to throw, fires over the middle, nearly intercepted by Derek Baker, a terrific defensive play. Absolutely a fine defensive play by Derek Baker. Billy Osborne was running a post pattern. Dickerson whipped the football, and the man was there, but watch Baker, last second, steps in, times the play perfectly, saves a touchdown. All right, John Rasp, sophomore punter in for the Panthers, averaging 40.7 yards a kick this year. And Brian Cobb and Eric Young stand deep at the 10-yard line for the Scarlet Knights. It's a high, booming kick. It's actually McQueen who will make the catch, fumbles the football. And Pittsburgh has recovered. One of the things Rutgers hoped not to do today was to commit errors. When you're playing without your quarterback, you've got to do everything you can to help your club. And there is a bad break for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, a fumbled punt by Tyrone McQueen. And now the Panthers knocking on the door inside the 10 
And we have an injured Rutgers player down on the field. So, Let's take a look at the fumbled punt once again. This ball got up in the wind a little bit. And McQueen just never really had it. He just lost the handle. I believe the injured player is Tyrone McQueen. Hard to see a number. Usually, Bruce, it's Eric Young and Brian Cobb who are back deep for Rutgers. This time, Coach Anderson electing to go with McQueen. Well, if he goes with guys with sure hands, uh, McQueen is a good choice. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver has had a very surprisingly good season. I mean, he never really did much last year. He caught just three passes, but in the spring, he was the most improved player. Came out this year. He's got 22 catches on the year, and I think he's probably uh, one of the most dedicated, hardest working kids on the Rutgers sideline. In case you just joined us, Pittsburgh leading Rutgers by the score of three to nothing with three minutes and 53 seconds remaining in this first quarter. And the player's still down. And this. And let's take a look once again at the, how Pittsburgh and Rutgers have fared so far this year. There's Pitt with the big win on national television, the first game of the season against Brigham Young, 27-17. The loss to Temple, which was a shocker yeah, at the time. That's one they'd really like to have back, I would think. And as, uh, as we take a look at the later games, the loss to Boston College, then the win over Notre Dame, the close one against Navy. It's really been an up-and-down season for Pitt. And that's a good description, Lou, because they, they are the only team this year to beat Notre Dame, and then they lose to Temple, a team that is struggling. So there has not been the type of consistency that Gottfried had wanted and yet they still are in the bowl hunt if they can win the remainder of their games, or at least two of the three. All right, Dickerson brings the Panthers up on a first down and 10. Up the middle, Hayward, huge hole for a huge man. <laughs> you need a huge hole for Hayward. Absolutely. <laughs> he gets across the right side, across the five, and down to the three-yard line. Craig Ironhead Hayward, six foot, 260 pounds. He's bigger than that, though, folks. He was 275 during Pittsburgh's off week. He cut it down to about 263, they tell me, coming into today's game. But he is a huge running back. Hayward. Fumble! And Pittsburgh still, no, Rutgers got it. Did Rutgers get it? No, Pittsburgh did, I'm sorry. Ball was recovered, finally, by the Panthers. The key is when that football's loose, you just got to dive on that football. And I don't know, it looked like a couple of players tried to almost pick it up. You can't advance a fumble in college football. So what you've got to do is just fall on that pigskin. And now Pittsburgh with an opportunity to go in on third and one. Third down and one. Dickerson gives Hayward touchdown. Now you know why they call him Iron Head. <laughs> he put that head down, and his second and third effort proved to be the difference as the Panthers get into the end zone. Well, I'll tell you what might have been for Rutgers as they had an opportunity to get that fumble. Here's the touchdown. There it is. See the head? He popped into Bobby Spidell. He popped off of Bobby Spidell, and he popped into the end zone. Spidell. You got a feel for him. Looked like he got hit by a truck. Van Horn is in to kick the extra point. The kick is up. It is good. Two minutes and 32 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. The score, Pittsburgh 10 and Rutgers nothing. Licardi Motors, the largest retail Chrysler Plymouth dealer in America. Selection, low prices. Licardi has 2,500 Chryslers, Plymouths, Peugeots, van conversions, and used cars. With more arriving daily, call for instant credit. Licardi Motors, the car giant, guarantees we'll beat any deal in the U.S. or you get the car free. Mention this station and get a free gift. Come to Licardi Motors, Route 22 West, Greenbrook, 752-7373. 
Welcome back to Giant Stadium where Pittsburgh is out to the early lead here in the first quarter by the score of 10 to nothing. The Panthers taking advantage of a Rutgers mistake. The fumble by McQueen inside the 10 yard line. The Panthers then take it in a two yard touchdown plunge by Craig Hayward. McQueen is headed to the locker room for x-rays or whatever. He is leaving the field under his own strength, which is good to see. But the fumble by McQueen enabled Pittsburgh to go in for their first touchdown of the day. Three plays, nine yards. Hayward with the one-yard plunge. And in the football game, Hayward has already carried the ball 12 times for 33 yards and a touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see him carry the ball 40 times or more today. He averages just over 30 yards per carry. It's a physical Pittsburgh team that likes to beat you up on the field. And I say beat you up, I mean execute and tackle and, and block, do all the basic things, all the fundamental things, but do it well. And that's, that's one of the things Pittsburgh is known for. The thing is, Bruce, they do it on both sides of the ball, as Absolutely. you pointed out, both offensively and defensively. Yep, that 4-3 defense is big and tough. Rutgers now is going to have to possibly put the football up in the air, something that offensive coordinator Dick Curl didn't want to do a lot of, but when you're behind like this, uh, you're going to have to be a little more creative than he would have liked. Van Horn to kick off for Pitt. It's a high end over end kick. Cobb takes it inside the 10. He's to the 20. Cobb outside and knocked out of bounds across the 35 yard line, a penalty marker on the play. And that usually means it's against the receiving team. We'll have to wait and see. And it is holding against Rutgers. This will back the Scarlet Knights up, up obviously. Rutgers trailing by the score of 10 to nothing. And this is a bad situation for RU, Bruce, simply because we mentioned Rutgers um, may not to score a lot of points today, and now they find themselves behind early. John Murphy, William Floyd High School, Mastic Beach, New York, New York All-Stater, over 5,000 yards passing in his high school career. But this is another level, and now he's got to rise to the challenge. Here's Stevens looking to turn it in. He will not. Pittsburgh played it well. And the Panthers had it diagnosed right from the very start. Jerry. Olsovsky comes in to make the tackle for Pitt. He's a good one, that Olsovsky. He is the middle linebacker, 6'2", 212, from Youngstown, Ohio, home of Boom Boom Mancini. Two minutes even remaining in this first quarter. Pitt leads 10-0. Now, Murphy throws best short, so look for him if he goes to the air to go to his tight end or go to one of his backs. Murphy fires and completes. That was intended for Jim Kahn, who finally got into a varsity football game. Jimmy Kahn, a much heralded high school player from Clarkstown South High School in West Nyack, New York. Last year and this year bothered by nagging injuries, but this is a guy who once scored seven touchdowns in a single game and raced for 52 touchdowns in his high school career. So if he ever gets over those injuries, Lou, one thinks that he may develop into a good football player, and Rutgers been hoping to get him into a game, and they finally have. You mentioned his first action in a regular season game. He had a superb spring game in the annual Rutgers intra-squad contest back in April. Scored a touchdown in that game. Third down and 11 for Rutgers. And Murphy back to throw. Protection breaks down, fires incomplete. He was hurried and he tried to get it to Campbell cutting across the middle. Had Bruce made the catch, he would not have had enough for first down yardage. The pressure came from big Tony Siragusa, 6'5", 270, local product from David Brearley Regional High School in Kenilworth, New Jersey. There are four players from Kenilworth on that Pittsburgh roster, which is laced with New Jersey talent. O'Connell into kick for Rutgers. He stands at the five yard line. It's a line drive type kick. Good coverage by the Knights. Udovich down first. So Pittsburgh will start 
another drive just shy of their own 40 yard line. Panthers leading 10 nothing. So far in the game, Pittsburgh has run off 22 plays, Rutgers nine. A pattern definitely developing. That's what we expected. Pittsburgh, ball control, Ironhead Hayward on the ground. Dickerson back to throw, play action, has time, fires over the middle, catches made a shot delivered by Derek Baker. But a fine catch by Reggie Williams coming across the middle. 17-yard pickup, excellent execution. Dickerson shows you the arm. Williams ran a nice post pattern, he paid for it. But it is a first down for the Panthers, and Williams is up and he's okay. Beautiful play. First down, Pittsburgh at the Rutgers 43-yard line. I formation behind Dickerson. And he gives the Hayward, who bowls his way over the right side, across the 40, down to the 37-yard line, picks up good yardage on the play. About five, second down and five coming up for Pitt. You see, Lou, he's getting too many yards for first down. It didn't look like he got much, but he comes up with five or six. Now on second down and five, you only have two downs to get five yards, which is not that difficult. So first down is the key, especially in a ball control offense. Rutgers has to slow down that first down play and put some pressure on the young pit quarterback. Dickerson to throw, fires incomplete, right through the hands of Reggie Williams. And I'll tell you who you should credit in that play, Derek Baker, because Williams took one heck of a hit a play before and you got to believe Williams was thinking about it there. He turned after he, before he uh, was able to hang on to the football, and it went right through his hands. So you know that pop that Baker made? It may have some effects later as the game goes on. Panthers have a third down and five at the Rutgers 37-yard line. And again, the eye formation behind Dickerson. Movement on the left side of the pit line, the tight end Eric Seaman. Moving too early, and that'll back pit up. Siemens, another pure freshman. Pittsburgh has four of them, which is rare today. You almost see everybody being redshirted. These are four guys that played last year in high school and are playing this year in college. A lot of freshmen on this pit club as you look up and yeah. down their, their depth chart. They've got a lot of depth. This team is really building for the future. They've got a bright one. Third down and 10 for Pitt Dickerson back to throw. Lots of protection. Fires intercepted. Korea knocked out of bounds in Pittsburgh territory at the Panther 40 yard line. Big break for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers who needed some type of spark. And they finally get it from Paul Gurria who picks this one off, dropping in his coverage, filling the gap, and coming up with the football and running nicely with it. Garia, who has come on strong, first start against Kentucky in Giant Stadium, has been the starter at linebacker ever since. 28-yard return. An interesting formation by Rutgers. Now they break out of it. First down and 10, and Lipset <laughs> up the middle. Got maybe a yard. <laughs> a weird formation by the Knights, and they pick up a yard on the handoff up the middle. Obviously, Dick Curl and Dick Anderson trying to catch the pit defense off guard, Bruce, but I have to admit I've never seen that before. Well, what they're looking to do is anything that's possible, Lou, to confuse that Pittsburgh defense. We have come to the end of the first quarter here at Giant Stadium. The score at the end of one is Pitt 10 and Rutgers nothing. Start your weekend Friday with ESPN. 1973 was a magic year for Larry Zonka and the undefeated Miami Dolphins. Next, meet the NFL's best runners. Their motto is, if I can't run around them, I'll carry them with me. Then Aloha from the Asuzu Kapalua International. Andy Bean defends his title against a field of top golfers. Live from Hawaii. Plus live Breeders' Crown Championship harness racing. See it all Friday on ESPN.
Welcome back to Giant Stadium. Lou Brogno joined by Bruce Beck and the rest of the TKR Cable Sports crew where Pittsburgh leads Rutgers 10-0 going into the second period. Rutgers now has a break. Korea on the interception. The Scarlet Knights have a second out and nine at the Pittsburgh 38-yard line. Rutgers got to capitalize here and do something with that turnover. John Murphy, the quarterback, pitches Henderson. Here's a reverse. Eric Young looking to turn the corner. Fires. Campbell. Touchdown. It's going to be called back. It's going to be called back, I believe. Looks like there's a clip on Rutgers that it's going to be on the quarterback, John Murphy. What a call. What a play. Terrific execution. But unfortunately, the quarterback, John Murphy, clipped the man coming to him. It was close, but the call was made, and it's coming back. So wipe the touchdown off the board, and they'll mark it back. Super play, though. Rutgers doing anything they can to confuse or get Pittsburgh off balance. Watch number 14, right side of your screen. Now, that's the quarter. Yep, that's the call. It was a good call. I, I saw the play coming, and I saw the clip, and I believe it was the proper call. That was some throw by Eric Young, you know. He plays baseball for Freddie Hill's ball club. He's an outfielder, and he just put it right on the money. Rutgers second down, and a long way. They go to another reverse. Here's Cobb. Out of bounds at midfield. I like that call. Coming back after Razzle Dazzle with a little more Razzle Dazzle. Cornell Holloway knocking Cobb out of bounds. Inside pit territory, but well short of first down yardage. You might ask, what is Rutgers doing? Well, their starting quarterback, Scott Ernie, who's having such a terrific season, 1,322 yards, seven touchdowns, only four interceptions, is out for at least two weeks with a left knee injury. And the unproven, John Murphy is in there at quarterback, and Rutgers is trying to do things without him having to throw the football. Third down, 18. Murphy rolls out, in trouble, fires, intercepted. And a nice interception. Coming up with the play is... Cornell Holloway. So Pittsburgh stops any chance for Rutgers to go in. He was looking for Brian Cobb, who was running an out pattern, but he underthrew him, and Holloway, in the drop, picked up the football. So Rutgers had a real opportunity there to get back in the football game, but the penalty called the TD back, and now Pittsburgh in business. Panthers with a first down at their own 33. Hayward up the middle, crashes across the 40, and picks up eight. Again, it's first down, and again, it's first down yardage. That's too much for the Rutgers defense to allow. Craig Ironhead Hayward, Lou Holtz said about Hayward, I thought it was an interesting quote. He said, when Hayward breaks out of the huddle and lines up in the backfield, he looks like a tackle who got lost. <laughs> He doesn't run like a tackle, though. He has explosiveness and quickness for a guy who's 260, 265. Second down and three. Here's Hayward. He runs into the middle of the Rutgers line that time. Did not pick up first down yardage. About a, about a yard shy. All right, first quarter stats. Let's take a look. It's all pit. It is all pit. 107 to six and six to zip in the first down department. Panthers. One big Rutgers play, excuse me, Lou, was uh, called back. Yeah, the Panthers in control, without a doubt, not only in the statistic department, but on the scoreboard as they lead 10 zip. 13 and a half remaining in the first half. Third down and one for the Panthers, tight formation. And movement by Pittsburgh. And this probably will move the Panthers back. You're seeing some inconsistency in the part of Pittsburgh. That's been their problem this year. They've played some great football games. They've played some mediocre football games. And 
the inconsistency shows within the context of one game itself, Lou. We've seen them look good and explosive, and we've seen them come up with some mental errors. But it's still their football game, their lead, and they're in control. Third down and six for Pittsburgh. Dickerson rolls out right. He's going to run all the way. And he has the pit first down across the 45-yard line, knocked down at the 47. And Bruce, that was run all the way. He's got the option to throw the ball, but I think he saw the opening and said, I'm going to run. What happened was Mike Gottfried said, hey, I'm going to look at the future. And right now, my future is a freshman named Darnell Dickerson. Janella had pretty good numbers in the first eight games, threw a 50 Five percent completion percentage, seven touchdowns. But Dickerson's got much better feet. And he's the future for this club. This is so, so what Gottfried said was, I'm going to start Dickerson the remainder of the season. Let him get his experience. By next year, he's a sophomore with lots of experience. Now, there's there's two ways to look at it. One, do you, do you blow a kid's year of eligibility in three games? And I believe Gottfried felt, yes, it's worth it because I'm going to build this year into next year. Whereas Dick Anderson, who's got two very good freshman quarterbacks and Bill Chesna and Tom Tarver is not sure he wants to forego one of the players year of eligibility. Why? Because he's got a Scott Ernie coming back next year with two full years of eligibility left. And I think Ernie's proven that he's gonna be an outstanding quarterback. And therefore, I don't think Dick really wants to play the freshman today. And that's why he's going with John Murphy, although in many ways, the freshmen may be ahead of Murphy in terms of what they've accomplished to date. Derek Baker is the shaking up player. At the 43, he gets up and he'll walk off pretty much under his own power. So that's good news for Rutgers. You As saw you saw, Pitt leading the series uh, four to zip, winning last year. That was one of the closer games in the series, 20 to six the pit win last year. The Panthers have taken care of Rutgers in the uh, short series that they have played, and they've beaten up on the Scarlet Knights, to put it bluntly. This is an important series for the Rutgers defense. If they can get Pitt to punt or come up with no points and get the football back, trailing just 10-0, then they're still very much in the football game. Second down and two. Riddick has the first down near the 40, brought down at the 41-yard line, and another Rutgers player down. Getting up slowly is Alec Koch, but he is up. Riddick, another true freshman from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. They do move the sticks. It's another pit first down at the Rutgers 41-yard line. Panthers lead 10 to nothing. And they're on the move again, looking for some more points. Here's the pitch. Hayward almost loses the handle. Good defensive play by the Scarlet Knights coming up to force the play was Chris Evans. He Took three guys to tackle him. Yeah. Huh? He read it well. He slowed Hayward down, and then he waited for some help, which he sorely needed. <laughs> Mark Pimpo, the uh, Navy linebacker, said tackling Hayward is like tackling the USSS <laughs> Iowa. Two, second down, excuse me, second down and eight for Pitt. At the 39, Dickerson on the draw. Here's Hayward. Oh, oh boy, pummels. what a hit that was. Pummels into Spidell at the 37. Well, I'd love to get another look at that one because Spidell was in good position. He made a heck of a play, one-on-one -on -one tackle against Hayward. But you got to believe that when he goes home tonight, he's going to feel that. Here's a situation where the running back is more punishing than the guy who's tackling him. Nice play by Bob Spidell, who leads the Scarlet Knights in tackles this year with 105. Third down and six, big play for Rutgers. Pitt trying to get that first down. Dickerson rolls out left side, looking, fires long, has a receiver. Catch is made inside the 15. Bill Osborne makes the reception, and the Panthers will have a first down and 10 inside the 15-yard line. Dickerson throws a beautiful pass once again. The blitz was on. Spidell was picked up at the line of scrimmage. 
the 23-yard completion well executed to Bill Osborne, who is a three-letter winner at Pittsburgh. He plays basketball, baseball, and football. That's almost unheard of today. And the Panthers are rolling at the 13. From the 13-yard line, Pittsburgh with a first down and 10. Hayward. Down to the 10-yard line. Picked up three. Second down coming up for Pitt. Dickerson four for nine in the air so far today, 63 yards. Pittsburgh offense has been on the field a long time. That Rutgers defense is going to start to wear down as the game goes on. There's a lot of pressure on that defense. Dickerson rolls out right side, has running room. He turns the corner, takes it down to the one yard line where he's knocked out by Alec Hoke. What a difference to have a quarterback who is mobile. And that's what Dickerson is. You can waggle action with him. You can roll him. You can straight drop back with him and allow him to scamper out of there if he has nothing. Hayward's doing a good job of blocking for his quarterback. And Dickerson is once again showing us the mobility, the quick feet that Gottfried said he had. Actually, the ball is marked inside the one. So it's first and goal for Pitt at the one-foot line. And there's movement. Darren Zella is across the line. He might have been drawn off. So far, Pittsburgh has run off 35 plays. Rutgers just 12. That ball control offense is eating away and fatiguing the Rutgers defense. And Bruce, this has got to really uh, get to head coach Mike Godfrey of Pitt. First down and goal at the one. And then you have a legal procedure. All of a sudden, you're back to the six-yard line. That's the mental errors again that uh, have really hurt this club throughout the season. So it's first and goal for Pitt at the six. Ten minutes remaining, second quarter. Panthers already lead it, ten to nothing. Hayward fumbles. No, Dickerson kept it. Goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And to Dickerson's assets, the ability to improvise. Ball popped loose. Dickerson picks it up and he runs for six points. Watch this, it just bounces right back to him. Hey, I'm gonna run to the right, nobody's there. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A berserk play, to say the least. But Pitt capitalizes, and the Panthers are in command. Extra point attempt. Snap is good, kick is up. It is good. Timeout on the field, 10 minutes, three seconds remaining. Second quarter, Pittsburgh 17, Rutgers nothing. The color and excitement of college basketball best stands out on the ESPN. See more than 150 live NCAA basketball clashes, including more than a dozen conference championships and the NCAA tournament action. The college basketball season tips off with a weekend of two special tournaments, the Great Alaska Shootout and the Maui Classic. NCAA basketball stands out November 27th through the 30th, live on the ESPN. Well, if you're a Rutgers football fan, you couldn't ask for a worst circumstance. Rutgers trailing 17 to nothing with a untested quarterback at the helm. It is still early, but uh, certainly the pattern has developed and Pittsburgh is gonna run the football. They're gonna let Dickerson do some creative things to the outside. This is the beginning of a whole new era in Pittsburgh football with Darnell Dickerson, the freshman taking command. He has looked so good, so poised for a kid who's uh, 19 years old. 
Sal Janella, as you mentioned, was the starting quarterback for the Panthers most of the season. Senior signal caller. Had pretty good stats, 55%, seven touchdowns. He did, however, throw eight interceptions. So more interceptions than touchdown passes for Janella. And it was the lack of mobility that eventually made Godfrey to, to make a move, make a change. All right, Van Horn will kick off for Pitt. Back deep for Rutgers, Brian Cobb, and Eric Young. They stand at the 10-yard line. One area that Rutgers has really been strong in this year has been in the kickoff return area. Both Cobb, as the ball blows off the tee, both Cobb and Young, Bruce, uh, over 23 yards per return. Cobb has been a big play man all year long. He had the 94-yard kickoff return against Kentucky which led to the game-winning touchdown for Rutgers. Caught a 45-yard pass against Army. Had a 37-yard run against Syracuse. He's made the big plays this year. He also uh, caught a pass in the Cincinnati game for 39 yards. Uh, the only touchdown for Rutgers in the football game. Scarlet Knights won that game 10-7. So number 20, Brian Cobb, has provided lots of sparks for the Scarlet Knights this year. It's a bounding kick, which is picked up by Young at the 20. He's to the 30. Eric Young still on his feet, squirms up to the 40-yard line, and Rutgers has excellent field position to begin this drive. The Scarlet Knights will have it first down and 10 at the RU 40. All right, John Murphy comes back out at quarterback for Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights down by 17. Of course, the situation here you, with just under 10 minutes remaining in the quarter. He's got to go short now. Go to his tight end. Go to his backs. Get a little confidence. Don't try to get it all back at once. Absolutely. And run the ball also. Don't just go right to the air. Henry Anderson's first carry of the game. He's across the 40-yard line up near the 44. So he picked up about three on the play. Second down and seven coming up for the Scarlet Knights. See, Rutgers would love to develop a running game, but I don't know if it's going to happen. And being behind by 17, it's more difficult to now try to establish a running game. But clearly, when Henderson has big days, Rutgers wins. And when he doesn't, Rutgers loses. Some stats in a moment. Pitch, Henderson turns it in. Nice run by Henderson, spins near first down yardage. He may be a yard shy. Henderson's best games this year, 190 yard, nine yards against Cincinnati, Rutgers won. 118 yards against Army, Rutgers won. 100 yards against Boston College, Rutgers won. His poorest performances last week against Vanderbilt, 26 yards, Rutgers lost. Four yards against Penn State, Rutgers lost. 27 yards against Syracuse, Rutgers lost. Third down and one. Stevens has the first down. He's across midfield into Pittsburgh territory at the 48. Brings up a roar from the Rutgers fans. First thing they've really had to cheer about, except for that touchdown, which was called back. First first down for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And they did it the way they really wanted to do it, which was keeping the ball on the ground. So now it takes a little bit of pressure off John Murphy who can go to the air, but is not forced to go to the air immediately. Lip set, nice running across the 45 down to the 42. You saw right before the snap, the Rutgers players in that odd offensive set once again. Hank Strand was the first guy to really create all that movement before the snap. He used to do it out of the eye with four guys. Otis Taylor would be back there and Mike Garrett. And they'd break off before the snap. And what Rutgers, again, is trying to do is trying to do anything they can to confuse that Pittsburgh defense. Penalty marker. No. It's picked up. First down for Rutgers. I was watching the near official. He threw a penalty marker and then picked it up. So Rutgers getting two first downs 
and doing it all on the ground, which was their game plan initially coming in. And I give the club credit for sticking with the game plan right now, even though they're behind by 17. But he's going to have to put the ball in the air at some point today. Official saying there is no penalty. And I'll tell you what happened on that play. The tight end, James Jenkins, was up on the line of scrimmage. He then moved back into a slot. And when he did that, the referee threw the flag and realized, of course, that Jenkins was legal in doing so. Are you thinking of freelancing as an official on Sundays? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be unappreciated. Just keep me out of the line of contact, that's all. Injured player coming off the field is Tony Siragusa for Pitt, defensive tackle, junior, 270 from Kenilworth. First down for Rutgers at the Pittsburgh 36-yard line. Jenkins in motion. Give up the middle. This is good yardage. Lips at barrels his way across the 30 down to the 28. Good pickup on first down. He looked like Craig Hayward on that play. Good blocking by that offensive line in this drive. Billy Milano, Doug Strickland, Nick Erta, Billy Dubiel, and Steve Tardy. Starting to win the battle in the trenches. Billy Hyros now in there. Left tackle replacing Milano. I formation behind Murphy. Second down and two. Jenkins again in motion. And this is the give. Henderson, he's in trouble. And he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Panthers that time read it well. Jerry Olsofsky making the tackle for Pittsburgh. Olsofsky, one of the real leaders of that Pittsburgh defense. Look at some of the people in the upper deck here at Giant Stadium. A, a fairly good crowd on hand for this game between Pitt and Rutgers. And of course, had Rutgers won last week against Vanderbilt, you'd have to think it would be even more people here. Absolutely. Third down and three. Murphy inside handoff to Eric Young. He will not have the first down as he's brought down at the 30-yard line. So. An interesting play by Rutgers, something you usually don't see from them. However, it goes for naught, and O'Connell is in. And Sclafani may go for a field goal attempt here. I saw O'Connell come out at first. Bruce thought Rutgers would punt, but he will line up for the field goal. It will be a 47-yard attempt. That's in his range. He hammered a 50-yarder this year. 9 of 14 on the air for Sclafani. Kick is up. It is no good. Short. And Pittsburgh will take over on downs. So Rutgers finally showed some offense. They moved the ball well on the ground, but that was it. Pittsburgh has the football at the 30-yard line. Rutgers going to have to go to the air at some point today. And the, the running game did get established somewhat, but you've got to mix it up just a little bit. I formation behind Dickerson. Hayward crashing down at the 32-yard line. Joe Savoy over there along with Gurria for the Knights. Hayward from Passaic, New Jersey. Number three in the nation in rushing, averaging 133 yards per game. This year, in eight football games, he's had 100 yards or more in every game. Over 1,000 yards for the season. Second and eight, Hayward up the middle. Nice moves by the big guy as he goes across the 40 and brought down at the 43. That should be enough for a pit first down, and it is. There's Craig Hayward's season stats. 1,061 yards, seven touchdowns on the year for the big tailback. I asked, uh, I asked Alec Hoke about Craig Hayward 
And he says, you know, he's he's just not a power runner. He's got great balance. He can jump over a pile. And he says the only way to stop him is to hold him and wait for help. <laughs> Here's Riddick. Just a few yards. Pickup of two, second down, and eight. You know, you take a look at Hayward, and he's the guy with the size and, and everything and the power. He's the tailback. Riddick is the, the small guy. <laughs> That's true. He's the fullback. Yep. Riddick's 205 and Hayward's 265. Hayward's the Charles Barkley of college football. <laughs> Second down and eight for Pitt. Dickerson to throw. Plenty of protection. Fires. It is nearly intercepted by Derek Baker down at the 30. Falls incomplete. And Dickerson overthrowing badly that time. No one was near the ball. Billy Osborne was the closest receiver to him. And he's really either, yeah, he's over overthrowing the near receiver and under shooting the far one. And it was just Derek Baker in the ball, but Baker couldn't pull it in. Panthers come up third down and seven at their own 47 yard line. Dickerson rolling out, looking. Now takes it out of bounds. And Pittsburgh will have to punt. Joe Savoy chased Dickerson out. Good pressure by Rutgers. Good coverage in the secondary. Dickerson was forced out of the pocket. Couldn't find a receiver. And had to eat the football out of bounds. So Rutgers is held. Vaughn McCoy joins Brian Cobb deep for the Knights. And John Rasp is in to kick for Pittsburgh his second punt of the afternoon. He stands back at his 25 yard line. It's a short kick. And it takes a Rutgers bounce. So the Knights again will have pretty decent field position at their own 35 yard line. Three minutes, 35 seconds remaining here in this first half. Rutgers trails Pittsburgh by the score of 17 to nothing. And the score would indicate it's been all Pittsburgh, and Bruce really it has. The Panthers have been in command. Yes, they very much have been, but in the last five minutes, Rutgers have stabilized somewhat. They were able to get a couple of first downs. They stopped Pittsburgh defensively. This is a very important drive offensively for Rutgers. They've got to establish something. They've got to get points. Murphy falls down on the snap. And, of course, in college football, once your knee touches, you are down, so he loses. Yardage on the play, it'll be second down at 13. John Murphy is struggling a little bit. I think he's pressing right now because he hasn't been able to generate much offense. And he did throw the, the block, which was an illegal block that was ruled as a clip and therefore negated the Rutgers touchdown. So Murphy, who's 0 for 3, has got to be feeling a little bit nervous out there. He's just got to get relaxed and... Forget about everything that's happened and try to make something happen. Murphy gives up the middle and the Rutgers fans unappreciative of the call. It's James Can on the carry. Third down and 13 for the Scarlet Knights. Two and a half remaining. Now Pittsburgh in a position where they can blitz, where they can go after him. It's an excellent blitzing down, and they've got the guy to do it. Number 26, Zeke Gadsden, who has 15 and a half, 19 and a half sacks this year. Murphy fumbles the snap. It's picked up by Lips at heads up play, but he's nailed behind the line of scrimmage. And the Rutgers fans are letting the Knights offense hear it a little bit. Yep, the fans are booing right now because they want something to happen. And you can understand it so far. First downs, it's Pittsburgh 12, Rutgers 2. And Murphy continues to struggle. The little things, which are really fundamental things, he's having uh, difficulty with. And I know his confidence right now has got to be uh, very much shattered. O'Connell, good kick. Austin takes it at the 30. Terrell Austin moves to the right. Now he moves to the left and is brought down at the 32-yard line. So Pitt will have the ball. 
with a minute and 35 seconds remaining in the first half at their own 32. Terrell Austin, you may remember, was the man involved with Charles Gladman and uh, was associated with Bloom and Walters. The NCAA ruled that because Austin cooperated in the investigation, that if he paid back the loan and disassociated himself with Bloom and Walters, that he could be reinstated this year. And he was. After sitting out the first two games, he came back in the third game, and he's playing backup free safety for the Pitt Panthers. Hayward. And met by Marty Mays at the 35-yard line. Pickup of about three, second down and seven. Now Pittsburgh's got the option of just being conservative. Or if they get a first down here, they can decide to try to get some points. Hayward, 21 carries in the first half for 69 yards. We were talking up in the press box before the game. And the real question was, how many times would Ironhead carry the football today? And most of us thought he would get it at least 40 times. He's well on that way. Also well on his way to another 100-yard game. He has eight straight. This is Hayward. Barrels through the right tackle hole across the 40 and up near the 44-yard line. Now I wouldn't be surprised to see Pittsburgh put it up in the air. They're only... Oh, 25 yards away from a potential field goal try. And Dickerson's been throwing the ball with lots of confidence in this first half. Let's see if Godfrey tries to get some more points. Dickerson back to throw. Looking. Fires long. Incomplete. Wow, what an arm. I mean, he, he wasn't near his receiver there, but that ball was... 55 yards in the air, straight drop. Intended for Reggie Williams and Gene Austin on the coverage for Rutgers. Maybe 60 yards in the air. 31 seconds remaining in the half in Pittsburgh with a second down and 10. We'll see what the Panthers try to do here. Will they run it out or try to get some points? Hayward. Up the middle, across midfield, and to the Rutgers 48-yard line. Alec Hoke on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. 20 seconds and counting down here in the half. The officials call for time. And it is a timeout taken by Pittsburgh. So a break in the action with 19 seconds, as you see it, remaining here in the first half. Your score is Pittsburgh 17 and Rutgers nothing. Welcome to STS Car Service Centers, New Jersey's largest tire and car service company. At STS, we feature the Delta Signature Supreme with a 50,000 mile written warranty. None of our major competitors will match the Delta warranty. So why settle for a promise of performance when we'll put it in writing? Choose STS and the Delta Signature Supreme. New Jersey is driving to STS, driving to STS. Must be a Pitt fan up in the upper deck. <laughs> Celebrating a little bit. Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing here at Giant Stadium with 19 seconds remaining. And the Panthers have the football with a third down and three at the Rutgers 48. Pass. Dickerson to throw. Lots of receivers out, lots of time. Now he scrambles around, he still has the football. Now he'll run. He has a first down and takes it out of bounds inside the 40-yard line with five seconds remaining. Excellent blocking by the Pitt offensive line. If Dickerson had looked and saw nothing, he might have been better off just getting out of bounds quickly and starting another playoff instead of wasting the 15, 16 seconds there. So now there's only really time for one play. And again, that's something that comes with experience. Right, and your receivers have to come back and help you in those plays, and a couple of the pit receivers were doing just that. Hail Mary time. I think he's just going to throw it long to the right side and see if anybody can catch it. Dickerson winds up. Nope, now nah, he'll pull it in. He's going to run. 
and he goes down at the 30-yard line. So that will end the first half here at Giant Stadium. Your score at halftime is Pitt 17, and Rutgers nothing will return with a look at the first half and second half action in just a few moments. Skill. Precision. Strength. And stamina. Sunday, November 8th. The struggling Super Bowl champion New York Giants take on the New England Patriots live following NFL primetime. Every Sunday night, your cable connection to the NFL is ESPN. Welcome back to Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Lou Brogno along with Bruce Beck. Rutgers trailing Pitt by the score of 17 to nothing as we are just moments before the opening kickoff of the second half. Bruce, it was all pit in that first half. The Panthers just dominating. They did. They had the football for a greater period of time. They ran off 46 plays to just 23 for Rutgers. The total yards, a tremendous differential there, as you can see, 223 to 32. Rutgers unable to complete a pass in the first half. Pittsburgh was four for 11. Rutgers tried to capitalize on that one pit turnover, but they unfortunately couldn't, and the one Rutgers touchdown was called back. First downs, 13 to two in favor of the Panthers. Ironhead Hayward, 23 carries, 89 yards in the first half. Dickerson, 10 carries, 55 yards. Uh, Dickerson completed four of 11 for 70 yards. For Rutgers, Henry Henderson, who is so important to the Rutgers rushing attack, four carries, 13 yards, Curtis Stevens, seven carries, seven yards. Murphy was 0 for 3 in the air with an interception. So one-sided, complete domination by uh, the Pitt Panthers. Although Rutgers did uh, stabilize, as I mentioned, the last uh, seven or eight minutes of the, of the second quarter. And hopefully Dick Anderson can tell his club that they can build on that. And uh, if they can get a score early in the third, get back in the football game. You can't get back into a game if you can't generate anything in the air, and Rutgers has been unable to do anything in the air as zero passing yards reflect that. Rutgers will be receiving to begin this second half. Pittsburgh will be kicking off from right to left on your screen as Jeff Van Horn, their sophomore kicker, is in. Going back deep for the Scarlet Knights, Eric Young and Brian Cobb. Keep in mind that Tyrone McQueen was shaken up in the first half, and uh, we do not know at this point whether or not we will see him in the second half. Right, McQueen went down when he uh, couldn't field the punt. It led to Pittsburgh's first touchdown, so a Rutgers error kind of set the tone of things to come as Pittsburgh capitalized, and they lead 17 to zip as we go into quarter number three. And a big difference in the first half. The freshman quarterback, Darnell Dickerson, who took complete command of that pit offense. It's a high kick carrying to Eric Young at the 10, to the 20, and up to the 25-yard line. Rutgers will put it in play there at their own 25. Scarlet Knights will come out on offense. Same people up front. Erda, Strickland, Dubiel, Milano, and Tardy. Bruce Campbell, the tight end. The receivers will be Cobb and Young. Same people in the backfield. Henderson and Stevens behind John Murphy, who comes out to begin quarterback, to begin the second half at quarterback. Rutgers with seven possessions in the first half. They had to punt the ball away four times. One pass was intercepted. They missed the field goal, and they fumbled the ball. So a lack of productivity offensively. Scarlet Knights first half. On the reverse, Cobb coming right side, turns the corner, knocked out of bounds across the 30. So he picked up about five or six yards on the play, and that's a play that has been fairly successful this afternoon for Rutgers. Anything with a little bit of razzle-dazzle has worked. Anything to offset that pit defense has been uh, the best plays for Rutgers. And the one play, which was called back, which I alluded to a couple of moments ago, the double reverse touchdown pass to Campbell called back. 
Ball marked at the 31, a pickup of six on the play. It's second down and four. Panthers showing blitz and movement early by Rutgers. Doug Strickland firing off the line of scrimmage. You said blitz, and Zeke Gadsden, number 26, was doing just that. This will back the Scarlet Knights up. So you had a second down and four. Now you have a second down and nine. There's the uh, Panther trying to keep warm. That's a good good way to keep warm. <laughs> a chilly day here at the Giants Stadium. Nice in the sunshine, but most of the field now covered in the shade of the stadium. Murphy straight back to throw. Looks, fires, incomplete. Intended for Eric Young and overthrown by a wide margin. Back on the coverage for Pitt was Billy Owens and Zeke Gadsden. You know, we really haven't mentioned how good this Pittsburgh defense is. Uh, the secondary has been rock solid all year long. The only time that they really allowed a quarterback to do something was last week when Don McPherson, who has done it to everybody, uh, the young man from Syracuse, had a good day. But otherwise, this defensive unit of Pittsburgh has been just outstanding this season. Here comes the blitz. Murphy looking to get away. He cannot as he's caught from behind. And a big play by the Panthers. Jerry Wall, number 51, in on the play, along with Olsovsky. They're allowing Lou just 269 yards per game. And there's the pressure as it came from Wall and Olsovsky. And Jerry Olsovsky with now four and a half sacks on the season, making the stop. O'Connell to kick. He stands inside the 10-yard line. And the Panthers showing heavy pressure. Kick is away. They went for the block. Might have partially got a piece of it. Austin across midfield and straight up the gut as he's to the Rutgers 45. And that's where Pitt will have the football first down and 10. Overall, Pitt is ranked 15th in the nation in defense, 8th in the nation in passing defense, 13th in the nation in scoring defense, yielding just 14 points per game. So we've talked a lot about Ironhead Hayward, but the defense has been just outstanding. Panthers come up, Darnell Dickerson at quarterback. Freshman with an eye formation behind him. Calls the signals and he back to throw on play action, sets up a screen. Hayward trying to make a circus catch, cannot. Chris Evans almost was in position for the intercept. Before today's game, Rutgers, uh, in a relationship with Krauser's food store, had the largest hoagie on record in the parking lot, over 1,000 feet, 300 pounds of meat, 250 pounds of cheese, 150 pounds of lettuce, and Rutgers was hoping that Ironhead Hayward would stop by for a couple <laughs> of pieces before the game. Incomplete as Dickerson fired across the middle, intended for Tutin. Good coverage by the Knights. Rutgers felt the best way to slow down Hayward was uh, to give him a sub sandwich. He might have met his <laughs> match. Dickerson with good time, firing across the middle. Tough pass to catch. And it brings up third and long. Third down and long, third and 10 at the 45. Dickerson to throw. Now he's in trouble. Hoke is on the chase. But Dickerson still with the football. Fires and complete. Went through a couple of receivers' hands. Reggie Williams was the last man to touch it for Pittsburgh. Scott Miller is the injured Rutgers player. He's been hobbled by a left ankle injury. He missed the Army game. Uh, he's been in and out of the lineup. He was last week against Vanderbilt. He was moved to nose guard for this game from tackle. And he is the injured player on the field, and he is going to be a good one. 6'4", 263, a sophomore. They're certainly building the defense around Scott Miller, so this is something that is not good. And certainly uh, Scarlet Knight fans are uh, holding their breath a little bit right now with Scott Miller on the, on the gridiron. All right, there's a break in the action with Miller down. 13 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The score, Pittsburgh 17 and Rutgers nothing.
Welcome to STS Car Service Centers, New Jersey's largest tire and car service company. At STS, we're brake experts. We've got the high-tech equipment and the latest training to make sure that your car stops. There's no skipping on the details because each of us is dedicated to complete customer satisfaction. For quality brake service, choose STS Car Service Centers. Jersey is driving to STS, driving to Scott Miller still down at midfield, and that's certainly not good news for Rutgers. There you see Pitt 3-0 on the road this year. Panthers looking to keep that undefeated streak alive. Well, next week, the Panthers take on Penn State. I was talking to one of the scouts here for the Peach Bowl, and he said they were very impressed with Pittsburgh, especially now with another dimension of quarterback. And if uh, Pittsburgh wins next week, they should be going to an important bowl game. I won't say a major bowl. I won't say a minor bowl, though certainly the Gator Bowl is one possibility for the Panthers. Scott Miller being helped off the field. That would be one of the biggest bowls that they could get into at this point. Panthers with an unusual schedule this year in that Penn State is not their last game. Usually Penn State is the last game of the season for Pitt. This year, it's Penn State, then Kent State to finish the season, which is uh, unusual, as I mentioned. Where is that game next week? I think it's at Pittsburgh. I believe it's in Pittsburgh. Yes, it is. John Rasp is in the punt for Pitt. He stands at the 40. Miller 30. walked off with some help, so it didn't look that bad, and uh, that's certainly good to see. 33-yard average for Rasp in the game. He booms this one. It's a high... Kick takes a Rutgers bounce, bounces back across the 20, and the Knights will have the ball at the 23-yard line. Well, Rutgers has not had horrendous field position in this game. They just haven't been able to move the football. That's it. Haven't been able to do anything in the air, and they had one, one decent possession where they got two consecutive uh, first downs rushing the football with Henderson carrying well, the defense has solved some of the puzzle thus far. Since uh, midway through the second quarter, Rutgers has stopped Pittsburgh from scoring. But now the onus is on the offense to do something. Jenkins in motion, pitch to Henderson, turns it inside, takes a huge hit from Billy Owens, the strong safety, but does get across the 25 up to the 26. And a pickup of about three, second down and seven. Billy Owens, a good football player, first team all East one year ago, an All-America candidate, third on the team in tackles with 65, a couple of sacks, caused three fumbles from Syracuse, New York. He's a senior. Lipset with a nice run, a good burst for Lipset across the 30, up to the 33-yard line. They may measure for the first down. No, they say it is a Rutgers first down as they mark it across the 34. I like Dan Lipsetti. He's not fancy. He's not fast, but he just gets the yardage. Uh, he's a hard-nosed kid. Nineteen yards and four carries today for Lipset. Typical workman-like performance similar to Curtis Stevens, the starting fullback. So Rutgers gets their third first down of the football game. This is Henderson jitterbugs his way up to the 35, but the Panther defense played it well as Pittsburgh formed a wall and smothered Henderson. Pick up a yard, second down and nine. Dick Anderson said during the week that you know, Rutgers wouldn't do anything fancy with John Murphy, a, a new quarterback try to simplify things as much as possible. And now Henry Henderson, another, another vital cog in the Rutgers team is lying down on the field injured. You saw Henderson with 621 yards on the season coming in. Let's see what happened. He was pushed back. You see what happened. He got bent backwards. His legs are underneath and he was just pounded by three or four guys. And that's how you hurt that knee. What happens is the foot gets caught underneath and the knee's got nowhere to go but back. And uh, we all saw very glaringly one Monday night what happens when a leg is in a funny position with uh, Joe Theismann and Lawrence mm -hmm. Taylor. 
of course, they all, Rutgers already has the one key knee injury this year to Scott Ernie. And to Prescott, who uh, missed yeah. the entire season, the running back, who hopefully will be back next season. Henderson uh, played only three games last year because of a cracked sternum and injury to the chest. No contact this past spring, but he's come out and had a very fine year with 621 yards. And Henry looks to be okay. Maybe just a sprain or a twist. And he's walking off the field under his own strength. He is a tough little guy. 5'9", 165 pounds, but if you've seen him with his shirt off, he is all muscle. He's got, uh, he's got pecs like you, Lou. Those chest muscles, they just pop right out. That's right. <laughs> Henderson, a split an image. <laughs> Second down and nine. <laughs> As I hear it from the truck. <laughs> this is Lipset. <laughs> no yardage there. Upended. Third down and nine. So here it is, third and nine, and you say it's got to be a passing down, but Murphy's been unable to get it done in the air, and Rutgers doesn't want to try too many things in the air. But I think this time they're going to have to try it. Twins to the left. Third and nine. One back behind Murphy. He rolls out left, fires early. Campbell almost made a great catch now. Penalty marker on the play, and I believe... Interference. It, it will be inter for, yeah, yep. interference against Pitt. Troy Washington on the coverage for the Panthers. Watch Washington here. He's all over Campbell. Never had a chance to grab the football. Washington had held the right hand of Campbell as he tried to grab the football. So there was no doubt that a flag was going to be thrown there. You know, in retrospect, obviously a poor penalty. Yes. For Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Murphy's had trouble all day long. The pass is thrown short. short. No chance for a first down. Good point. So Washington not uh, not using his head on that play. First down and 10 for Rutgers. They get a first down, of course, on the pass interference. And although it's been a one-sided game, it's still only 17 to nothing. And uh, if Rutgers can score somehow, they'd be back in this game. Reverse. Here comes Cobb. Look out! Oh, almost turned the corner. Cornell Holloway got him by the shirt tail. Sorry to jump in there, Lou, but if Cobb had gotten one step further to the outside, nobody, but nobody was there. The whole side had been vacated by the move to the right side of the field, and if Cobb had gotten by the line of scrimmage, I'm telling you, he was long gone. But he's not a blazing fast guy. He really makes the most of his quickness. Second down and five for Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights are at their own 41-yard line. Twin receivers to the right. Up the middle they go. This is Lipset, who has good yardage, and he may have a Rutgers first down. He's running hard today, Dan Lipset. Offensive line doing a nice job right now, winning the battle of the trenches. And they will move the sticks as RU picks up the first. Rutgers at their own 47. 11 minutes remaining, third quarter. Pitt 17, Rutgers nothing. As we mentioned earlier, a big game as far as bowl possibilities are concerned. Bruce mentioned the scouts here from the Sun Bowl, and I believe the Independence Bowl is also here. Peach Bowl. Rutgers offside on the movement in the line. The whole right side of the line, Dubiel and Tardy. Rutgers with very good field position right now. Something we didn't mention earlier, Bruce, with the new quarterback, of course, brings out problems with the cadence, and sometimes you'll see some uh, illegal procedures in the line. The entire offensive unit is so geared to the to the cadence, to the to the sync, to the timing of the quarterback that when you do bring in somebody new, everybody's got to adjust. First and 15. James Kahn fumbles the football. We'll wait and see. Pitt is saying they have it. 
I believe Rutgers has recovered. Second down and 14, actually picked up a yard, Rutgers on the fumble. Let's see, Khan had the handle and then it was just knocked out of his hands real quickly by Zeke Gadsden. Rutgers able to hold on. Under 10 minutes remaining third quarter. Reverse again, here's Cobb. Gatson played it well that time. Might have picked up a yard on the play. Finally, Pittsburgh figured out that reverse. Yes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think they're starting to pick it up. Surprisingly, Rutgers has run that play, I would have to think, at least four or five times in this game. And that's an unusual high amount for a play like that. It's been successful until that time. Well, again, because they... Uh are unable to throw the ball, and they don't have a lot of confidence, it would seem, in John Murphy. They're just trying some alternatives, Lou. Third down, 13. Murphy back to throw, being pressured over the middle. Brett Marsola makes the tackle, excuse me, makes the catch. And it was a fine catch, short of first down yardage. But John Murphy gets a completion, and uh, even one completion can do a lot for a quarterback's confidence. Those are the type of passes that I would think he should be throwing all day. Short, quick passes, tight ends, backs, slants to the wideouts. O'Connell into punt. Austin back deep for Pitt. Line drive, kick, drives Austin back to the 10. Good coverage by the Knights as Austin is hemmed in inside the 15-yard line. Rutgers' intensity level is far better than it was early in the game. Pitt hasn't scored since uh, midway in the second quarter. And it's not Rutgers' defense's fault right now. They're, they're playing much better. Kicking team doing a good job. Defense keeping Rutgers in the game. Just needs some points from the offense. Panthers for the first down and 10 at the 15. Darnell Dickerson still in at quarterback for Pittsburgh. He's back to throw, rolls out now. Now he's going to turn it in. Dickerson slides down. He's safe at the 24. That's smart. Why, why get pounded, Lou? He's got to try to last four years. <laughs> Heck with one game. He's got to try to survive. And the sooner he learns to go down on that knee and go out of bounds and not get popped, the longer he's going to last. He picks up nine. Second down and short. He was recruited by Michigan, Nebraska, and Georgia and ended up at Pittsburgh. Riddick, nice reverse of field. Picks up the pit first down. Up to the 28-yard line. Lewis Riddick, who was projected at free safety this year, was told to come back to that offense when Hayward was injured. It's interesting that Zeke Gatson, the guy who plays uh, linebacker, is having such a phenomenal year, has been shifted from fullback to linebacker all throughout his career. But this year really came into his own when Darrell Woods suffered an injury. Hayward. Tripped up by Austin across the 40. And it's a pit first down. Hayward shows you a burst of speed. Another dimension. He goes 16 yards here, his longest gain of the day. Ed O'Neill, one of the Rutgers assistant coaches, said, hey, he's more than just a power guy. He's tough to bring down. He not only runs over people, but he can run around him. And Hayward is at 100 yards for the ninth consecutive game. Hayward dancing and then bowling across the 45 to the 46. You mentioned uh, Hayward, ninth consecutive game over 100. The pit record, of course, held by Tony Dorsett. 20 straight games over 100 yards. I don't know if he'll get that mark. No, I don't I don't think so. Hayward is third in the all-time pit rushing list. He has 2,356 yards, and he'll become second either later this year or early next year. 
because he does have one year of eligibility left. You know how many yards Dorsett had though? Over 6,500. He'll never get there. Second down and eight. Michael Stewart is the man in motion for Pitt. Hayward. Wow, that was strong movement by Hayward. Penalty marker on the play. Bob, excuse me, first Bob Spidell is taking a beating from Hayward. And the call is against the Pitt Panthers for holding. Give Spidell some credit, though, for hanging in there, for sticking that head in there. Spidell had 21 tackles last week against Vanderbilt. He played very well, although the defense overall allowed over 500 yards, and Vanderbilt never had to punt. 6.08 remaining, third quarter. And Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing. It has not been a real exciting third quarter, folks. But Pittsburgh does have the football, second down and 14. Dickerson, he's in trouble. Zell is after him. Threw it away. Nearest man was Derek Baker. That time Dickerson showed some poise as he threw the ball away instead of throwing it into a crowd or taking the sack. The pressure came from strong safety, Darren Sellers, who was blitzing. And Sellers put a lot of pressure on Dickerson, never really gave him a chance to find his receiver. And now, once again, Pitt is in a difficult third down and long situation, third and 15. And the Rutgers defense trying to rise to the occasion and give the offense one more shot. Dickerson back to throw, play action, fires and complete. And then a late hit by Vaughn McCoy on Reggie Williams. And that was a costly mistake. That is a mental error. And that's one thing that Dick Anderson will not tolerate. He does not like mental errors. Let's watch what happens here. The ball is clearly overthrown. The receiver is out of bounds. And look, the late hit, and the flag comes out. And you can't blame the official there because you're protecting the player. Would have been fourth down, but it gives Pitt a first down in Rutgers territory at the RU 46-yard line. And you might say, hey, when you're out there in the field of battle, though, you're playing with such intensity, you can't slow down sometime. But the answer is you, you've got to always be thinking. You've got to always know where the ball is. You've got to always know where the sideline is. Craig Hayward. Fumble. He was down, they're saying. They're saying he was down, but I, I got to question that call. I think Ironhead's body had hit the turf, and then the ball popped out. They spotted at the 40. Let's watch it. Hayward is down, and then the ball pops out. It was close, but I believe that he was down, and therefore Pitt does keep possession. Well, I questioned the call, and I was wrong. Yeah, you can stick by your original call. <laughs> Panthers, second down, and four. Hayward, right side. Picks up maybe two. Hayward starting to pick up yardage slowly and surely. A lot of carries today for the Ironhead one. 27 on the day. Third down and one coming up for Pitt at the Rutgers 37. No secret here. They're going to give the ball to Hayward. He's going to run straight up the middle, and he's going to say, try to stop me, guys. I'm 280 pounds. Well, he got the first down as he jumped up over the top, and you've got a feel for the people who are underneath when he landed. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Sometimes there's no secret to this game of football. It's just power and execution. If you saw a guy jumping in the air with that kind of size, you'd be a little intimidated also. This one's close. They might measure. 
Go ahead. And it looks as though they have it. From our angle, it appears that Pitt picked up the first down. And they did. First down, Pittsburgh at the Rutgers 36-yard line. This is the kind of drive that Mike Godfrey wants from his ball club. Over four minutes of clock, eight or nine plays, picking it up on the ground, occasionally going to the air. Eye formation for Pitt. Stewart in motion for the Panthers. Hayward. Turns it in, good defensive play. Darren Sellers comes up, makes the tackle. Ironhead Hayward had a lot of problems at Pittsburgh. He was suspended in the 1985 season. Has come back. Mike Gottfried has called him a model citizen since he's been back. The suspension came about when uh, he had an injury and apparently hit another student with a crutch. Uh, he was in a lot of trouble the first couple of years at Pittsburgh, but he straightened himself out. Second and eight. Dickerson rolls out of the pocket, fires, has a receiver. Catch is made inside the 30-yard line. Reggie Williams on the reception. It is short of a Pittsburgh first down. One of the Rutgers players down again at the 35. It looks to be Alec Hoke. There's Reggie Williams, 22 receptions on the season coming into the game, 382 yards, three touchdowns. There's a look at Alec Coke. And that Reggie Williams missed a lot of last year with a broken leg. He played only two and a half games and caught 17, so they expected a lot from him. He's from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Joe Willie Namath country. Seventeen nothing. Pitt, three oh three remaining. Third quarter, and the Panthers are on the move again. It's a third down and one for Pittsburgh at the Rutgers twenty-seven yard line. First down, Hayward down to the twenty. Plenty of yardage for the first down and much more. Hayward showed you a little bit of dance there. A little bit of a soft shoe. Fred Astaire, he's not, but he is very mobile for a big guy. Rutgers with 68 rushing yards in the game. Hayward with 122. This is a super drive by Pitt. The Panthers get in the end zone. They'll just about do it here, really. Dickerson fires. Williams makes the catch inside the 15-yard line. Tackle made by Zellas and Sean Washington. It's a good pickup of about seven yards. Second down and three for Pitt at the Rutgers 14. He's really zinging that ball, too, because Rutgers' coverage has not been bad. The wide receivers are very close. They're being pounded as soon as they catch the football. But he is putting it right on the money, and the pit receivers are hanging on despite very good secondary coverage by the Scarlet Knights. I mentioned Williams on the catch. It actually was Osborne, Bill Osborne, who made the reception for Pitt. Hayward up the middle, not a lot of yardage that time. Spidell came in and submarined him and upended Hayward. And that's the way you got to tackle Hayward, low and, and knock him off his feet. Yeah, I don't think you can tackle him high. You got to go low and, and wait for help. And it's very important that the linebackers fill and the linebackers come over and uh, contribute to the tackle. Last year, Rutgers did a good job. They controlled Hayward, kept him under 100 yards, but it was mainly because Bachman and Stowe filled the gaps and really helped the offense of the defensive line. Third and one. Hayward, I don't know. He may have the first down. Had to get inside the 11. I, I think he got it. Pretty tough to stop him on third and short. It's one of the keys to this pit drive. 
about three or four times they've had that third down and one I'll tell situation. You, Lou, you may be right this time. Uh, <laughs> I, they're going to have to measure this one. It's close. Hayward's uh, those close second and third and one is like a bus that ran a red light. <laughs> There's the story. 37 seconds remaining in the quarter. And, and Rutgers trails 17-0. And Pittsburgh is short by about a foot. Let's see what Mike Godfrey decides to do here. Dickerson still out there, and Pittsburgh will go on fourth down and a foot. Well, what do you think? What would be your guess? As far as the call's concerned? Yeah, anything anything well, other than Ironhead? It'll be Hayward, probably right tackle. I think that's a good call. I'll say left tackle. How about up the middle? <laughs> First down. He fumbled the football. Really? Rutgers says they've stopped him. Depends where they mark it. It looks like uh, he has the first down. Well, there's no fumble. Official timeout. They're going to bring the chains on. Good surge by the Rutgers defensive line. A big surge. This is the, one of the toughest things to do is to spot the ball where you really think the guy landed, and it, it's almost subjective. That's how difficult it is. Rutgers is held. A big defensive stand by the Scarlet Knights. Well, let's see if it lifts the offense. And Rutgers defense all season long inside the 20 has come up with big play after big play. They've gotten tougher as the team has come closer to their goal line. And that's a credit to the defensive group. Henderson is back on, which is good to see. And Murphy remains the Rutgers quarterback. 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. Rutgers first down and 10 at their own 11 yard line. Stevens wrestled down. Gatson on the tackle for Pitt. Loss of a yard and the clock winding down. So we are near the end of the third quarter and we're there. So that's the end of the third quarter. Your score, Pittsburgh 17, Rutgers nothing. I remember when my father started Spitalier Furniture. He based his business on quality and integrity. He offered fine furniture at the lowest prices with incomparable service. That was 82 years ago, but Spitalier Furniture hasn't changed. My son Skeeter and I still offer the best furniture at the lowest prices and service only a hardworking father and son team can deliver. spitalier has been around for three generations and Skeeter's son Tony will see that the tradition continues because Spitalier Furniture cares about tradition. As we come back to Giant Stadium and prepare for the beginning of the fourth quarter, Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing, and Bruce, the Rutgers defense, has played much better here in the second half. They've kept the Knights in. That could have been a face mask on Gadsden. It was not called, though. Murphy, from his own end zone, fires incomplete. He just got rid of the ball. He would have been nailed for a safety. And uh, clearly, Murph just getting rid of the ball. He was lucky to get that one off, Lou. General direction of Bruce Campbell. Third down and 10. Yeah, I think that really would have been a face mask call back to that first, first down, but nothing was called. Murph. Throws incomplete. Stevens unable to hang on. It would have been a tough catch over his head. Well, I talked to Murphy during the week, and he felt confident that uh, he would be able to do a job today. His folks canceled a trip to Puerto Rico to come watch him play. 
He felt like he had waited for the opportunity and had been patient and deserved a shot. But things haven't gone his way today. O'Connell will punt from his own end zone. A booming kick. He's done a great job kicking the football today. Austin fakes the reverse, keeps it himself, and is spun down at the 46-yard line. That's where Pitt will have the football. In defense of Murphy, though, he hasn't gotten tremendous protection from the offensive line today. Pittsburgh has been in his face pretty much the whole day. They have been coming from every angle. Well, Dick Anderson and his staff had a choice to go with one of the freshmen and forego their eligibility for this year. But he instead went with the sophomore who had been practicing with the first two units, John Murphy. Hayward. Well, there's Craig Hayward at his best as he makes his way down near the 35-yard line. One of the Rutgers players down. It looks to be George Bankos, number 71. And Lou, getting back to the quarterback situation, it's all a matter of philosophy what you'd like to do as a coach. You know, do, do you feel that the, the kid who's been practicing behind Ernie all year deserves the chance? Do you feel that maybe one of the more talented players, the freshman, uh, should give up uh, the year of eligibility because they're ready for things now? Dick Anderson felt uh, that he wanted to go with the sophomore. And I think he wanted to preserve the eligibility of the freshman, although uh, what will happen next week, we don't know what, what Dick's approach will be. Mike Gottfried, on the other hand, didn't like what was happening with Sal Janella, his redshirt senior quarterback, and said, I'm gonna go with Dickerson, the freshman. He's my quarterback of the future. But there are totally different situations because Janella's not back next year for Pittsburgh, and Ernie is back for two more years, potentially, for Rutgers. So, you know, it, it's not something that has a discernible answer that's very easy to, to come up with. It's something that's complex and requires, I think, a lot of input from a lot of people. And I know the Rutgers fans today are very upset with what has transpired, but uh, there's a lot more to the thought process than just sending a guy to the field and saying, go. There's a look at Murphy on the sidelines, warming up. And uh, again, confidence is a big factor, and his confidence has to be shaken mm -hmm. in this fourth quarter. George Bank is, is getting up very slowly, but he does get up, and that's a positive sign for Rutgers. George is a guy who has worked extremely hard coming back from a knee injury, uh, missed most of the season, and started to come back against Army. He was definitely projected as a defensive starter this year, along with Kokoski, Hoke, Duffy, and Miller. But when Kikoski, Duffy, and Bankos went out with injuries, it left just Hoke and Miller in that depleted defensive line. Savoy has come on and done a solid job the last couple of games. Tompkins has come on. Miller left and hasn't returned. He was hurt earlier today. First down and 10 for Pitt at the Rutgers 36. Dickerson gives, this is Riddick. He is nailed. Behind the line of scrimmage, Marty Mays was in on the tackle originally for Rutgers. Nice play by Mays. Absolutely, the sophomore from Orange, New Jersey. Marty Mays getting uh, a shot at nose guard with Scott Miller out. We don't know the extent of that injury. Of course, Carter Giles, originally scheduled to start at nose guard for Rutgers in the game, he uh, did not start. Miller started there, and Miller came up injured before. Dickerson fires, and the catch is made. Osborne with the reception inside the 20-yard line. Bill Osborne. 19 catches coming into today's game. 33 catches last year. I mentioned he was a walk-on with that Pitt basketball team, which is a very good team, coached by Paul Evans. He's got so much talent coming back this year. They should be certainly up there with Syracuse for the battle for the Big East title.
Hayward running hard down to the 15 yard line. Pick up a five, second down and five for Pitt. 13 and a half remaining in the game. Pitt leads 17 nothing. It's fun to watch Hayward when he tiptoes. You see this big guy and he's trying to find a little bit of a crease, a little bit of an opening. He is not slow at all. Very well liked by his teammates. Hayward again, picks up a couple. You know, you hate to draw comparisons between football games because the coaches will tell you each and every game is, is different. But this game reminds me of last year's Rutgers Florida game in many ways. Uh, when, of course, uh, Scott, Joe Gagliardi was hurt against Penn State. Ernie came in the next game and uh, couldn't generate much offense for the Rutgers offense in that game. The defense played fairly well, 15 to three the score. Very similar. Dickerson to throw. Threw it away. And again, that Rutgers defense coming up with the big play. Seven red shirts were chasing Dickerson all around the field, and he had nothing to do but dump it. And a couple of injured players in the field, Derek Baker for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers and Bill Osborne for Pittsburgh. And I did not see what happened on the play. They obviously ran into each other. Yeah, you, you think they knocked heads or something, don't you? Let's watch what happened. The pressure is on. Seven red shirts are after him. Now watch downfield. That's 19. Baker, he's in your picture, and he just gets tripped up. He must have fallen funny because Osborne was down on the field, and Baker went over him and didn't expect it. Osborne is up and is okay. Baker is still down on the field. Looked like Baker took it in the knee, which, of course, could be another Rutgers problem. So as they work on Derek Baker, 12 minutes, 18 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter. There's a break in the action. And the score is Pitt 17 and Rutgers nothing. Start your weekend Friday with ESPN. 1973 was a magic year for Larry Zonka and the undefeated Miami Dolphins. Next, meet the NFL's best runners. Their motto is, if I can't run around them, I'll carry them with me. Then Aloha from the Asuzu Kapalua International. Andy Bean defends his title against a field of top golfers. Live from Hawaii. Plus live Breeders' Crown Championship harness racing. See it all Friday on ESPN. As we come back, Derek Baker is up and walking off the field. He'll walk across the field under his own power. And as they take Baker off, Rutgers trailing Pitt 17 nothing, 12 18 remaining, and the Panthers have a fourth down and three at the Rutgers 13. So Baker appears to be okay, but you want to talk about a physical football team, Pittsburgh is physical. Today, so many of Rutgers' best players have been injured, Henry Henderson, and their nose tackle, Scott Miller, now Derek Baker. They really uh, can hit, can't they? Pitt's going on fourth down, fourth down and three. Dickerson rolls out left, in trouble, being pressured. Keeps the football, is brought down short. A first down yardage, and the Rutgers defense comes up big again. I don't think you can blame the Rutgers defense because here in the second half, they have done a good job shutting down Dickerson and controlling Hayward. But how long can you stay out there and, and work and continue to make the important plays without getting something back? It, it deflates you, and that's, I'm sure, what has happened. But I don't know, Nightingale's defense really hurt in the first half, came back strong in the second half. From the 12, Murphy has protection. Now he's in trouble, caught from behind. Tremendous speed displayed by Zeke Gadsden. What a story Zeke Gadsden is. He wasn't even supposed to start this year. But early in the season, Darrell Woods went out with an injury. It was a very serious injury because 
He got a virus which attacked his heart muscle, and the doctor said he'd have to miss the whole season. Gatson comes in in his place, and he becomes almost like a Lawrence Taylor. He's from a tiny town in South Carolina called Frogmore. The teacher commutes by ferry to get there. Lips at, lips at across the 10-yard line up to the 14. Louie, it's like a little island right off of South Carolina, and uh, it's such a small community the teachers have to get on a ferry and come in, and Darrell Woods is being compared to a Donny Shell. I think in, in, in the pros, he'll be a strong safety, a big, tough, strong safety, but what a year he's had at linebacker. You Third, like that Frogmore, huh? Yeah. I've never been there. <laughs> I haven't either. But I'll have to check out the ferry if I'm down that way. Okay. Third down and nine. Murphy throws, Cobb cannot hold on. He had it momentarily, couldn't find the handle at the 20-yard line. Would not have been a Rutgers first down. And now Brian Cobb is shaken up, and he took quite a shot. That pit defense continuing to pound the Rutgers offense. This pit team is physical. Pass was thrown a little bit behind him. And Cobb getting blasted in the back, checking out his leg. Murphy is one for eight in the game for five yards. At this rate, Coach Anderson's going to have to start uh, checking the entire roster to see uh, who's eligible to play here. Everyone getting banged up for Rutgers. It's a little bit raw out there, and when it gets a little bit colder, the bones get a little more brittle and just tend to see more injuries. Cobb sitting up now, and he's up. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him. I There's think, Cobb. Think, he's run the ball four times today. Yeah. I think the Pittsburgh-Penn State game is going to be a good game. Mm -hmm. I think Pittsburgh's got a real shot. And if they beat Penn State, you know, they should get into a bowl. A pretty good bowl, too. O'Connell back near his end zone. He's familiar with that area of the field today. High spiraling kick, Austin. Hemmed in inside the 45 yard line. And again, special teams by the Knights doing a good job. Glenn Miller, Clint Person down for Rutgers. O'Connell's done an excellent job today. And the punt coverage has been superb. Pitt goes on offense, first down at the Pittsburgh 44. Ten and a half remaining, fourth quarter. Pitt 17, Rutgers nothing. Hayward right up the middle. Marty Mays wraps him up. But Hayward drags Mays for about three yards and It'll be second down and seven. So we haven't had any scoring since the 10 minute mark of the second quarter of play. We're now at the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter of play. And you notice what the Rutgers defense is doing a better job on first down now. Ironhead Hayward, who was getting five, six per pop in the first half and in the third quarter now is being limited to three, four yards per carry. And that's a huge difference for a defense. Here's Hayward trying to turn the corner. And he's across midfield and close to a Pittsburgh first down. Hayward, a workaholic. It's over 30 carries on the day. He's up to 35 carries, 150 yards. His career best was 254 yards last year against Miami in an awesome performance. His re record for most rushes in the game was earlier this year, 42 carries in the victory over Notre Dame. Look at some of the crowds still here. Some of the Rutgers fans starting to file out a little bit across the way. And the Panthers short of the first down. It'll be third down and about three inches for Pitt. It's 
So we mentioned Pitt still has Penn State and Kent State left on the schedule. Unusual opponent for the Panthers. And Rutgers will finish up with West Virginia and Temple both on the road and both very tough ball games. Third down and in inches. Dickerson should have the first down, he does. Pittsburgh first down at the Rutgers 45. And the clock will continue to move as soon as they set the sticks. At this point of the game, what Pittsburgh wants to do is just control the ball, keep it on the ground as much as possible, give Hayward the football, eat some clock. And if they do that, they'll be well on their way to their sixth win of the year. Coming into today's game, the Lambert balloting in the East had Pittsburgh slightly ahead of Rutgers. The Panthers were number four and the Scarlet Knights number five. Depending on the outcome of the Boston College Notre Dame game today, Pitt could move up. Here's Hayward. Barrels down to the 41 yard line. Undefeated Syracuse on top of the Lambert Meadowlands Trophy, 8-0. Going into today with Penn State second, Boston College third, Pitt fourth, and Rutgers fifth. West Virginia sixth. And the Knights will have to take on the Mountaineers in Morgantown. Tough place to play. Tough Rutgers, place to get to. Yeah. Rutgers has not had success in Morgantown either over the years. Tough place to win overall. Hayward. Rutgers at West Virginia next week, one o'clock start, and then they finish the season at Temple, 12.30 start on November 21st. Hayward on that last play taking Chris Piquel for a ride. Piquel looked like he was in the rodeo. Carried him about four yards, down to the 35, third down to one. At least, probably, at least the 10th time that Pittsburgh's had a third down and one in this game, and they get the first down. You know, I think one of the reasons that their third down execution has been so good today is the fact that the quarterback has just shown such maturity and poise. Darnell Dickerson, I mean, if you look at a team with a young quarterback, you say, how do they do on third down? Did they make the big plays? And they have made the big plays all day long, and that, that a lot of times stems from the leadership. And Pittsburgh is getting very good leadership from a very young football player who's going to be an excellent football player, freshman Darnell Dickerson. Here's Riddick to the 31-yard line. Spidell and Bankos combined on the tackle for Rutgers. That Rutgers defense has been on the field a long time today, and they deserve a lot of credit. They've hung in there. They haven't hung their head low and said, hey, we're going to lose this game. I don't need to put out. It's a credit to Dick Anderson. That's, that's the kind of spirit he instills in his players. Second down, seven. Dickerson fires and complete. Across the middle for Reggie Williams. Coverage and good coverage by Newman and Austin for Rutgers. And it will be third down. Reggie Williams was the guy that got banged early by Derek Baker, right? And again, it came into play there. He was running the pattern over the middle. He should have been watching the football up until the last second. He took his eye off the ball and put his eyes on Baker because he respects Baker's ability to pop. It's like in basketball early in the game. You give a guy an elbow to the face, <laughs> and then you tell him to leave you alone for a while. you got to set the tone. Dickerson rolls out left side. He's in trouble. Now he's going to roll right. Now he's going to go left. <laughs> Directing traffic, fires, incomplete. Intended for Osborne down at the five. Well, that was an interesting play. It was, and it showed again great maturity on the part of 
Dickerson. Now, he might have had Hayward open down the right sideline. Hayward was waving. He wanted the ball, but Dickerson never threw it to him. The, the, big, the big thing in that play is the fact that he never went across the line of scrimmage. Now, watch this. He knows where the line of scrimmage is. I'm still looking for a receiver. Hayward's waving to me, but I don't think I can get Hayward the football, so see you later, Craig. Now I'm looking the other way. I'm still not across the line of scrimmage. I'm trying to direct my team. I'm looking for a wide receiver. Finally, I see Osborne, and he should have caught the football. He really should have. Fourth down at seven. Dickerson back to throw. The fires has receiver all alone. It's a Pittsburgh first down. Michael Stewart makes the catch and takes it down to the Rutgers 20-yard line. Blitz was on. Dickerson picked it up. Stewart had a big day against Rutgers last year. He caught a 75-yard bomb. He caught five passes overall. And he finally figures it to the offense here late in the fourth. Under seven minutes remaining. And Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing, and the Panthers are looking for more. Up the middle, Adam Walker on the carry for Pitt. Across the 15-yard line. Pickup of six, second down and four. I don't think Rutgers could have expected much more from their defense today. The coaching staff said, we'll do whatever we have to to win. It, it, it doesn't mean that we can't give Ironhead 150, 200 yards, because if you stop him from making the big play, that yardage means nothing. And he hasn't had one big play today. And several times they've held him inside the 20 or 30-yard line. Dickerson. Here we go again. Almost intercepted. What all this scrambling says to me is that the secondary is doing a superb job in covering the wide receivers. Dickerson in the game is 8 for 24 passing, which is nothing to, to write home about. We've been singing his praises all day more for his poise and his running ability and his ability to direct the attack. He's only completed one-third of his passes, though, and a lot of that is because the Rutgers secondary has done an admirable job. Third you can down. look good when you're a scrambler, excuse me, even when you're not completing passes, don't you agree? Yeah, well, you excite the crowd for sure. Like Flutie. Hayward, up to... He's got a Pittsburgh first down across the 10-yard line. If you go back to Flutie's statistics in his college career, his passing was never much over 50%. Some games it was under 40, 45, 50%. But the thing about Flutie was he always made the big play. He always pulled the team out. He scrambled for yardage. So you never remember the fact that he was 9 for 22 in a game. You just remember he had two touchdown passes in the last three minutes. That's the way Dickerson's playing. Hayward, 40 carries, 166 yards. Getting close to the all-time Pittsburgh record. Hayward had 42 carries against Notre Dame. Dickerson calls timeout. Didn't like what he saw. And there's a timeout on the field. Five minutes, 44 seconds remaining, fourth quarter. Pitt 17, Rutgers nothing. Welcome to STS Car Service Centers, New Jersey's largest tire and car service company. At STS, we feature the Delta Signature Supreme with a 50,000-mile written warranty. None of our major competitors will match the Delta warranty. So why settle for a promise of performance when we'll put it in writing? Choose STS and the Delta Signature Supreme. New Jersey is driving to STS, driving to STS. As we come back, Pitt leading Rutgers 17 to nothing. The Panthers will have a first down and goal at the Rutgers eight yard line. Well, that last play, Pittsburgh had Dean Callick Wire in the backfield, number 64. He's 6'3, 265. And along with Hayward, 6'2, 260. That is an awesome backfield. The uh, refrigerator not, play for Pittsburgh, I guess. That's not a refrigerator, that's the entire appliance store. <laughs> And he's back there now. It's Calaguar 64, number 64 in the backfield with Hayward. They're in the backfield, both of them together, believe me. <laughs> There's in motion. <laughs> Calaguar in motion. Hayward, penalty marker on the play. 
as he's nailed at the 10-yard line and driven back. I wonder if the flag is because Caliguire was too slow. How many times do you put an offensive lineman in a backfield and then send him in motion? Caliguire is the left guard. He, he looked really like he was in slow motion running. And running. Watch this now. That, that's Believe me, folks, that's supposed to be a running back. He's a guard. It's, it's really like pulling a guard. It's an interesting concept. You put the guard in motion, so he leads the play. But Caliguire was not very graceful there. And uh, if you call that tiptoeing, I think he's got a long way to go. Well, I think he hit the nail on the head, though. He said he was in motion, but as you said, he was in slow motion. Right. First down and goal for Pittsburgh at the Rutgers 17-yard line. The clock is stopped with 5.21 remaining, and they'll start it up now. I wonder if this is something we're going to see of more in the future. It's one thing to have a 260-pound running back, but it's another thing to have a, a guard in motion. It's an interesting concept, like I say, because when you pull a guard, the whole, the whole concept being that he's going to get out in front of the play, he'll move from the left side to the right side, and he's going to lead the attack and throw a block. This is just a way of getting him in motion earlier. But he's got to be a little quicker than Caliguire. <laughs> Caliguire is back on the offensive line for this play. I think he's glad, too. He, he looked a little bit uh, confused that last play. Riddick and Hayward are in an eye formation behind Dickerson. Hayward with a little stutter step across the 15-yard line, down to the 13. It'll be second in goal. Under five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Pitt Panthers are well on their way to their sixth victory of the season. Rutgers, unfortunately, will drop to five and four. And the Knights now, uh, with their last two games of the season, a bowl bid pretty much out the window, will be really uh, looking to finish with the best record that they possibly can. Dickerson looking to throw. Rolls left. Yudovich from behind. Nice play by Pat Yudovich. Good pressure, good pursuit. And he made the stop. This defense has come up with big play after big play. I mean, throw out the yardage, the total yardage, because I think with Pittsburgh's size and power, it was safe to say they were going to get a lot of yards today. The bottom line is how many points you got on the board, and Pitts only has 17. 345 counting down in the fourth quarter, third down and goal for Pittsburgh at the Rutgers 17. Dickerson's in trouble. Evans pulls him down. Evans and Zealous. Again, excellent pressure by the Scarlet Knights as they get tougher near the goal line. This will be goal to go from what, Lou? It'll be fourth down and goal from the Rutgers 38. Wow, that I haven't heard that one in a long time. And Pitt will have to punt. Again, Rutgers coming up with the big defensive plays all afternoon. Third sack of the day for the Scarlet Knights. John Rasp is in to punt. Brian Cobb stands back at the 10-yard line. It's a high kick. He aims for the corner. It's an excellent punt. It does, however, bound into the end zone. So Rutgers will get the ball at the 20-yard line. Scarlet Knights will have the football with two minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the game. And the Rutgers crowd giving the defense a standing ovation. The last time Rutgers was shut out, 1985 season, when they were shut out back-to-back -back games against Tennessee, 40 to nothing, and West Virginia, 27 to nothing. That was Dick Anderson's second year with the club. Murphy fires, Lipset makes the catch. He's got a Rutgers first down across the 30-yard line. If I'm Dick Anderson and Otto Knighting of the defensive coordinator, I'm proud of my defense today because of the effort they gave and the fact that they got tough as the team got close to the goal line, the Pittsburgh team. 
This is what I think Murphy should have been doing a lot more of today, just throwing to his backs and his tight end. It's the easiest pass to complete, and it builds confidence. Penalty, I believe, also on the play. And they will march across midfield. A personal foul. Late hit out of bounds against Pitt, and the ball is right smack dab at midfield. First and 10 for Rutgers at the 50. Murphy rolls out left. Nice catch by James Can. Still on his feet and across the 40 yard line. Nice play by Jimmy Kahn. Good effort. Good second and third effort. Kahn finally getting a chance to display some of his tools as a player here. Good job of keeping his balance. 2.30, counting down. Murphy. Here is Can. Down to the 35. 2.15, counting down. And obviously, Rutgers cannot win this football game at this point, but the Scarlet Knights looking for a confidence builder here. Wouldn't you agree, Bruce, with their young quarterback, Murphy? Absolutely. They've got to try to establish something for next week, Lou, and build from there. Murphy, incomplete. Intended for Stevens. Overthrown. 152 remaining, and it will be a third down and seven for Rutgers. Some interesting scores uh, from around the East today. Boston College playing Notre Dame tough, but losing the ball game. They, they get up for that game. That, that game means their whole season, and they almost knocked Notre Dame off, but the Irish winning at 32-25. Third and seven. Murphy tipped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. First downs, Pittsburgh 22, Rutgers 7. Total yards, quite a difference today. Pittsburgh with a decisive edge, especially on the ground. Rutgers unable to generate any offense today. And Pittsburgh got all their points in the first half of play. Perhaps the key play of the football game, the fumbled punt by Tyrone McQueen. Pittsburgh recovering on the eight of Rutgers going in for the touchdown, and it set the tone for the ball game. Fourth down and seven. Rutgers' last chance to score. Murphy fires incomplete. Intended for Campbell. Murphy was hit as soon as he let the ball go. Campbell was open, but overthrown. He hasn't been able to use his big tight end today. Campbell did have one terrific catch, but the play was called back on the double reverse. And Pitt will get the football back. The Panthers make some changes. They'll have a first down at 10 at their own 35-yard line. Larry Wanky is in a quarterback, Lou. Larry Wanky, number eight. You know, early in the year, Wanky and a couple of other quarterbacks were ahead of Dickerson, and when Dickerson got promoted, I think he just bypassed three or four other guys. He was that much better. Handoff up the middle, not much yardage. I think Dickerson's got a lot to learn, believe me. He is not fully schooled, but I think... It was a, a nice showing today in his first varsity start. He's got a very live arm. He can run with the football. He's got good poise. And he needs just to polish that game and get experience. But in a couple of years, I think he's going to be one of the outstanding quarterbacks, not only in the East, but in the entire country. So mark that down, Lou, OK? I have it written down right here. Call me in the fall of 90 <laughs> and uh, let me know what you think. <laughs> One minute, 102 remaining, and the timeout taken by Rutgers. Well, this gives us an opportunity to kind of wrap up a little bit early while uh, play is still going on. Uh, your impressions, you mentioned Dickerson, your impressions of Pittsburgh overall. I think Panthers, Pittsburgh's uh, a good team. I think they're a solid, 
fundamentally sound team, very big, very physical. They've got the one superstar in Ironhead Hayward who gets his yardage the old-fashioned way by earning it. Good, solid offensive line. Now they've got the, the one real missing link kind of, kind of going for them in the quarterback position. Defensively, they've got a very good pass rush. They've got Gadsden, who has made 20-plus sacks this year. Their secondary is experienced with Billy Owens and Gary Rich Richard being two of the standouts. So I think, uh, other than having a mediocre field goal kicker, this is a very good football team. And Not a great football team, but one of the better teams in the East. And I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Penn State next week. We will talk about Rutgers after this play. There's a completion for the Panthers across the 45-yard line. So Pittsburgh moves the sticks. All right, Rutgers, on the other hand, obviously going to lose this football game. They'll be 5-4 and four with two games remaining. Your assessment of the Scarlet Knights? Well, I think they've got to make a decision this week. If Ernie isn't ready to play next week, whether they want to go with John Murphy and continuing to work with him during the week, or if they go with Billy Chesna or Tommy Tarver, their freshman quarterbacks, and let them get some experience and get their feet wet and give up a year of eligibility because they would have played as freshmen. That's something that the coaching staff is going to have to decide during the week in, the, in evaluating Murphy's play. I think that the defense, although they allowed Ironhead Hayward to get a lot of yards and Pitt overall to move the football, I think they did a good job. I think they came up with the big plays when they had to. They showed the ability to be strong near the goal line. They have all season long. They have nothing at all to be ashamed of. The punting and kicking team today was good. Special teams, solid. It was just no offense, and that includes the running game of Henderson and Stevens and the passing attack of Murphy. Pitt does not have to run another play, and they do not. So that is it. The ball game is over. Pittsburgh has moved to 6-3 and three as the Panthers defeat Rutgers by the score of 17-0. Rutgers drops to 5-4. and four. Bruce Beck, a pleasure working with you. Ooh, a pleasure working season. with you. Hope we do it again.